Cardiovascular changes in pregnancy. During pregnancy, a number of changes occur to accommodate both mom and fetus. The needs of the mother, the growing fetus, the expanding uterus, and the potential for blood loss dictates that the cardiovascular system must expand. And this is what we shall be discussing in this video. Okay, so here we have an equation which we learned in our preclinical years. Cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. So in pregnancy, our cardiac output, which is the amount of blood being pumped by the heart every minute, increases. It increases by around 40%, and the cardiac output increases from 4.5 liters per minute to 6 liters per minute. This extra 1.5 liters per minute is supplying the expanding uterus for 100 mils per minute, kidneys 300 mils per minute, skin 500 mils per minute, and the GI system and breasts 300 mils per minute. After delivery, the cardiac output then falls to pre-pregnant levels. The stroke volume also increases in pregnancy by around 25 to 30%, and the heart rate increases by around 10%, from 80 to 90 beats per minute. Okay, next. So the peripheral vascular resistance decreases by around 20 to 30%, and this is most likely to be due to the vasodilation caused by progesterone, which is the dominant hormone in pregnancy. The blood pressure also goes down in pregnancy, as we can see in this graph. So we've got the axis here with blood pressure against gestation in weeks. And here we have the change in the systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. So as you can see over here, there's a dip in the blood pressure, reaching its minimum sometime during the second trimester. Then comes back to normal levels by the end of the third trimester. Now why does this happen? So to understand this, we need to remember an equation which we learned during our preclinical years. That is that the blood pressure is the product of the cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. So it is the systemic vascular resistance which decreases at the beginning of pregnancy due to systemic vasodilatation. So a low peripheral vascular resistance results in a low blood pressure. Great. Now next we're going to be discussing supine hypoventilation syndrome. So essentially this occurs in the supine position, so when the mother is lying down flat, and the pregnant uterus compresses the inferior vena cava against the spine. This results in decreased venous return back to the heart, decreasing the cardiac output, resulting in a drop in blood pressure. And this may result in the mother feeling faint and dizzy. Furthermore, the decreased cardiac output also reduces the uterine blood supply, which may result in fetal distress. That is why we advise women, especially in their third trimester, to lie in the left lateral position, as this displaces the uterus of the inferior vena cava. The pressure of the gravid uterus on the inferior vena cava may also result in the formation of varicosities in dependent areas, such as vulval varicosities. Okay, so some more changes to the heart in pregnancy. So the increase in cardiac output in pregnancy may result in hypertrophy and dilatation of the left ventricle and left atrium. The growing uterus also pushes the diaphragm upwards, which shifts the position of the apex beat anteriorly and to the left. This results in left axis deviation in pregnancy. Furthermore, they may have innocent grade 1 and 2 systolic murmurs due to the increased cardiac output, and there may be a third heart sound, secondary to the passive filling of the left ventricle. These changes in the heart will result in some typical ECG changes, which include an increase in the heart rate, a Q wave in lead 3, a shorter PR interval, and left axis deviation. Great, so that's it about the physiological cardiovascular changes in pregnancy. Thank you.